Hello and welcome back to Dialage for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host, Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about the Road to Worlds articles WizKids posted, some other fun bits and news, and answer quite a few listener questions. This is episode 415. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how okay, six yeah. people think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. LH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is my co host. Simeon Bruce, the current Dialect Hero Clicks champion. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, they call me Pizza Papa because oh, I make these sweet little balls with marinara sauce. They're pretty good. Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do. Can't wait to try them on the next Dial H uh, kitchen dining episode. Dial D for dinner, uh, if you would. Uh, Simeon, what made you happy this last week, my man? Uh, what made me happy this last week? So just today... I finally, and this is like two weeks late, finally saw uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Mountains of Madness. Is that the name of oh, it? That Eldritch sounds about right. Wars Beyond Your Comprehension. Is that the name of it? Uh, <laughs> scariest MC movie that uh. no child should watch. How did this not get an R rating? Is that what it's called? Oh, no, no. no. Multiverse of Madness. That's right. That's okay. Right. Uh, I was promised a lot of things about this movie. I didn't pay attention to any of them, and I was completely surprised all along the way. Um. Yeah, it's a good thing I was. I can't believe you got a, a spoiler-free experience. Pretty two much, weeks out almost for this movie. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Uh, we won't yeah. be discussing the movie in this episode uh, because we we did a Patreon exclusive spoiler-filled one. Uh, I know some people, like myself, take a while to go and see these movies. Some people might be waiting till it's on Disney Plus or on Redbox or however you watch movies. Is Redbox a thing? But yeah, um, yeah, we'll okay. we'll be okay. keeping this spoiler free. Nice. That made me happy. And in addition to that, uh, something that really made me happy was I finally started actually making progress on the sculpt swap. Man, hey. has it been a long, long hard road? Uh, but I finally got finally got my new phone. Finally got. I mean, that was a while back now. That was my yeah. original excuse. But finally got my new phone. Finally got some space. Finally got a little tripod to hold it. Um, and more importantly, more importantly, I finally found my primer because I didn't know where I nice. put my can of white spray primer. And that's kind of necessary. So, it yeah. is. Of course, if you're doing the Brooklyn Deep Cuts pre-primed Brooklyn figures. But... Uh, the other stuff, yes. Yeah, yeah, I had that primer. All right, cool. I'm excited. The, I'm, ex- the I'm excited minis, to see that sculpt swap. Not necessary, but this is a Star Wars Legion mini. And I don't right. know if it's necessary, but it's definitely suggested. It's like right. one of those you flat know, gray plastic ones. It's a, uh, it's a better safe than sorry type situation, I think. Oh, yeah. No? Yeah. Uh, well, right on, then. Uh, what made me happy this week... Uh, is yes, in part, Evil Dead the game, because I have been playing a lot of that, have been getting better at that. Dang, these missions are tough. Um, but I will do just a quick story. I was in a wedding this weekend in Watoma, Wisconsin, about eight, nine hours uh, from here. And, man, oh, man, oh, man, Wisconsin's a beautiful country. Really, really jealous. It looks it looks great. It looks really, really cool. Um, out of, like, 2,209 people, so small town, yet they had a Culver's. Mind blown. So many towns in South Dakota have like ten plus thousand people. No Culvers. Two thousand person town. I mean, to be Wisconsin, fair, I think Wisconsin's the home of they Culver's. They invented it. it yeah, yeah, they they invented it. Yeah, okay. but I'm still just like, dang, you lucky sons of guns. You don't understand how jealous I am of you. That's like killed... being like a Menards out here, because that's also from there. I mean, I guess true, true. Um. Yeah, so I was, I was in town for this wedding. Uh, it was a bunch of people that went to the summer camp together type of wedding. So I was kind of odd 
fuck out. I was uh, the boyfriend of someone who was going to be in the bridal party, so I was just sort of there, you know, accompanying, not really part of the wedding. Don't really know anybody there. Uh, so, you know, it was a little, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and so decided not dress up, not too crazy nice, decided to skip the suit jacket. It was a little warm. I had my boots and pants, you know, my hat and everything. I had my nice wedding attire going on. Um, and then after, like, the wedding is over, my girlfriend finally walks up to me. She's like, oh, is that what you're wearing? And I'm like, what? What's wrong with it? And I had my Captain America belt buckle on. And she's like, well, that's not really, like, wedding attire. That's not, like, that's not fancy, you know? Oh, I was like, I was a little I was a little taken back. I was like, well, I mean, you know, I really couldn't find you're my black belt. The symbol and... of the defense of your freedom is not <laughs> wedding attire. It, that was like that's kind of the argument though i was like you know this is something i'm really passionate about this is something i would wear at my own wedding you know she wasn't thrilled to hear that either um but i was like but this is something like i love like this is something i, tr- I truly enjoy you know um and i was thinking also in my in my like eyes it uh it looks cool i liked my captain record belt pocket it was a gift you know, it, I've got a brown belt. I need to wear my brown boots. It matches. The only other belt I have is like a black belt. Um, so I'd have to go find in my karate. black boots. But yeah, well, <laughs> in karate, yes, as well, but also like a normal leather black belt. But uh, what what made me happy was like she gave me like a hard time about like my Captain America belt buckle, right? And remember, I don't know any of these people. These are all like summer camp counselors. They're getting married at the, a camp. You know, they're slightly, I mean, they're older than normal camp counselors, obviously. But like, I didn't know anybody there. But you know what helped me start the most conversations and what got me a ton of compliments that day, Simeon? Was Captain America belt buckle. buckle. Yeah. Yes, exactly. My belt buckle. It will, yeah. Like, like five, Especially ten, in this like day and age five, six people. Oh, yeah. Everyone, everyone recognizes that. That yeah. is now a, I mean, what I will say, and like, I hope you don't take offense to this, Calder. Captain America was probably like a B-list character for most people for a very long time. Like, until the movies, most people knew Spider Man, Batman, Superman, even before they'd know like Captain oh, America. No, that's true. That's very true. But now, I also I would say his symbol lends itself more so to a belt buckle and not being a gaudy belt buckle than like a Batman, Superman, right, Spider Man, or a giant buckle. spider it, face, yeah, or a giant spider face, or yeah. Like so a, I think I think at it least works. it wasn't a Punisher logo. Then like, oh gosh. Then you might have made too many weird friends there. Yeah, maybe quite a few. But, like, had a ton of people, like, locked in, like, hey, man, that's the right choice to make. That looks good. I was like, hey, I really like the belt buckle. You know, it's like, that's what made me happy this week. As, uh, and she's probably listening to this. Love you, honey. Um, <laughs> you. I uh, had a really fun time on the trip. I also enjoyed, uh, like, dancing and everything. Um, yeah, like, the wedding was also no, no, fun. No, just the ceremony Culver's was great. and the belt buckle. That's Being your friends that. was great. Yeah, That's all that the, Calder enjoyed. Yeah. No, no, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the rest of it, but it did. Fried food it did make me, and belt buckles. Yeah. Oh, dude, the food, it took, like, two hours. So the wedding was at 3. Get back, you know, done around 4. Uh, well, we get done around, like, 3.45. The wedding was pretty quick. Get back to, like, the reception area. They say cocktail hour at 4. They're doing pictures after the wedding. It's going to start at six. And I'm like, ah, oh, six. Dang. So, you know, so we're like, now we're three hours from the wedding start. The food finally sits down. I'm at table number one. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm either the first table. Or I'm the last table. Right. So, <laughs> and I see them able 15 or whatever stands up to get food. And I'm like, son of a gun. Finally get food at around like 730. I'm just dying here. I've, I've had so many pretzels from the bar you know i've i've already started to walk over to like the i'm so happy that the wedding cake wasn't wedding cake and it was like these little cheesecake cupcakes because i was like i'm just gonna sneak a few of those over here uh hold me off for a bit um pizza was good shout out to christiano's pizza in watoma wisconsin very very solid very solid pizza um but yeah that's what made me happy this week the wedding was super fun uh belt buckle compliments were also fun I think the Captain America belt buckle uh, is a staple now for, for all weddings, especially her sister's <laughs> wedding, which we're going to go to here in like a two weeks. So I now might I bring an wanna, extra belt. To I want to go out of my way and get someone on Etsy to like make one that's like hubcap sized. Gosh. And I'll, I'll present that to you. 
Love I'll it. have to make some like up some like really stupid story as to why it's important. And you're like, ah, I can't never not wear this hubcap sized Captain America belt buckle that hey. doubles as a real shield. <laughs> you want to talk? Oh, you want to talk about gaudy belt buckles? It'll be uh, yeah. If you haven't seen how gaudy we can make this. Yeah, you have no can. idea. You have no idea. <laughs> you challenge uh, but all right. a cosplayer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you want to see how extra I can be? I'm a cosplay. I don't think you understand how like ridiculous this can, yeah. this can get. I've watched out of JoJo. You want to know how oh, extra gosh. I can be? Uh, I, I show up looking like William Zappelli or something. You're like, lucky. I, to, like, yeah, next, you're lucky. I don't pose wearing only suspenders that are somehow tight yet loose at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yes. and that have like sleeves attached to the bottom of them or something. I don't know. Fashion doesn't make sense in this world. Right. Also, I will say there is a guy wearing a bandana there, like Rambo tied around his forehead bandana. So as far as fashion statements go, just saying. I've been watching bandana. a lot of the Bad Batch, and uh, yeah, if there's anything I know, it's that if there's a man with a bandana, he can't outshoot Cad Bane. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> uh, uh, but no. All right, uh, that is a good uh, series. Is let's go ahead and dive into the news. I mean, you got a quick update about the Batman set. Update clarification about the Batman team up right. set. We can so, through right here. Originally, we, when we talked about the uh, set containing for the Batman team up set, uh, it was 17 common figures, 14 uncommon figures, 14 rare, two primes, 12 super rare figures, two primes, eight chase figures, 57 objects, and eight <laughs> mystery cards. Uh, somewhere, somehow, a few days later, it was almost like a week to the day later, uh, we got a slightly adjusted set contains list. Um, those 57 objects are no, 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 not 57 objects. 49 of those objects that they listed are now listed as constructs. As in, you know, ah. the, the Green Lantern constructs, which means we're either getting way more Green Lanterns than we thought, or just lanterns in general, because we've seen Larflees and Dexstar, and maybe that's it. I don't know. How many figures are in the set again, Simeon? Uh, total in the set yeah. is. Let's see. Let me let me do a little a quick maths here. Yeah, let's do some quick maths. Because I'm like, if each of those constructs is unique to its lantern, that means half, more than half the set is just lanterns. Then, right? Be in that case, I love 63 it. figures? 63 figures, and it's what? 50 constructs? Uh, 49. 49? Out Which, of how many again? 63? 49 out of 63 figures. Now, it's possible... There's no way they're all lanterns then. Because it just... Uh, like, Scooby Gang alone, plus Titans, means that they can't be all lanterns. Plus Batman, Robin, Peacemaker, even. Like... So then the constructs are going to be a little randomized or 60, something. Then. 69 figures, sorry. 69 figures. I forgot oh, about slightly the, uh, more. two of the primes. Yes. But, yes. so 69 um, figures. Ah, still, though. Even if we say both objects. primes are lanterns, I guess. That's... That, so I'm assuming that more than one construct might come with each lantern. Because how, yeah, how else, be unless random, Larflees dude. doesn't get any constructs, which I think is the going consensus, is that there's not really a lot of lantern constructs for... Earth orange lantern constructs orange. i should say yeah. um i think that's the going consensus is that larflees might not get any but uh 49 handily divides into seven seven times so unless they're gonna do some wiggity wackity um kind of weird stuff and then again assuming so green lantern has already gotten two constructs from wonder woman 80th oh unfair they got right. a head start they got a lead so if yeah. we're if we're getting in real deep into the math and we're gonna assume like each lantern core gets a glove a spotlight a chainsaw yada yada that kind of thing green lantern core should get one less which would be strange because of how the math works out seven seven constructs for seven uh, different cores. 
uh, uh, seven brides for seven yeah. brothers. I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'd be it's going to be weird <laughs> math no matter what, just because we have existing constructs, um, and then we have a new lantern color, at least one new lantern color that we didn't before. So no matter how it works out, it's strange. I will say forty nine divides into seven seven times, so that would be the most likely. But yeah. what? It, so let me double check with Wonder Woman 80th. So that was the last, obviously, the last DC set. Um, we got the Catcher's Mitt. So that's one Catcher's Mitt, uh, Stop Sign, Fire Hydrant, Chainsaw, Cowboy Boot, Spotlight, and Lasso. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? No, just seven. Jeez. Counting is hard sometimes. So we got seven constructs in the Wonder Woman 80th set. Two of those, again, were green. The only super rare was uh, the Hal Jordan that came with the Catcher's Mitt, which is also strange. All the others belonged to chases. Um, right. Six chases, which it's like, it, are these possibly chases? And then, like, your chase booster will be, congrats, you pulled the Green Lantern chase, and here's seven new constructs instead of characters in your booster. Um, they just, like, pack them in there like tuna in a can or something. I don't know. I really hope the chases aren't because there's only ch- eight. I really hope that the eight chases aren't lanterns at all. Um, or at least, like, it's maybe split, like, four and four into something else. Maybe, like, uh, Scooby Gang is chases. I'd be down like with that. Teen yeah. Titans Go. I mean, I prefer Scooby Gang over Teen Titans Go for chases. Yeah, I definitely uh, prefer Scooby Gang over. Ooh, as, or as or as maybe chases. hear this out. Original Teen Titans as chases. Ooh, actually. Yeah. Ooh, man. Um, OG Teen Titans cartoon chases. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, I did really cool. watch a scene from Teen Titans Go where they teamed up with. I don't know if you want to say teamed up, but they like had a crossover event with uh, the Teen Titans like whatever the cartoon series that predated Teen Titans Go but then right. also like the Young Justice Teen Titans that were like oh, darker really? and grittier and so like the Young Justice were like way scarier looking than like the chibi cartoon version or the hey. normal Teen Titan version it was pretty funny but yeah that's this it's still set to quote unquote release by December of this year um Obviously, I would bet more likely on being a like one of the first releases in 2023, which does mean it will be a full year of no DC, if that's the case. Because this set is so far on the end of 2022, it's possible that I think for the first time in quite a while, we'll go a full year without a DC release. Dang. I mean, yeah. Ouch, dude. I guess, yeah. Ouch. 2019, 2020, 2021. Yeah, just we've already yeah. passed the year without a DC release. Like, man, yeah, you put it like that. Point, yeah, we're we're into uncharted territory. We're technically over, over 365 days since the last DC release, but we might go a full calendar year um, with no DC, which would mean if they rotated Wonder Woman. That would be so rough in like 2023 man if we just keep up with like the pace of only one dc set that's pretty sad but yeah this does look to be a good set obviously i think we talked about it before i don't think it said anything about doesn't say anything about team up cards in a set that's called batman team up which is cool like that uh it didn't say anything about legacy cards either but still eight normal objects or I yeah. believe, yeah, eight normal objects, eight chase figures, eight mystery cards, um, and obviously the first DC set in a while. I'm hoping they do another buy it by the case kind of incentive thing. Really hope so too. Yeah, something to really push for people to get this. But yeah, that's the, that's the yeah. update of the <laughs> p- 
potential right this on. year DC stuff. Uh, hopefully this year, I am excited. I'm excited for it being uh, seemingly majority lanterns. This is a save up the cashola for me and splurge a bit on this set. I'm pumped. How um, much of a citcheroo if they call it Batman team up, they show Scooby-Doo and Teen Titans go. Yep. And it's like eight Titans, the, what, like ten Scooby gangs. So it's just like yeah. one of each character a few times. Two Batman, and then the rest is lanterns. <laughs> also, just peacemakers there for some reason, which just that's the only thing I hold out hope that there's also just a, a handful of random DC characters just chucked right. in there. We know that yeah, peacemaker makes some, zero sense as there's far some as villains like that have been listed. Hey, in we it got as well. uh, Poison Ivy in her little inmate costume. So yeah, All right, really quick, let's go ahead and take a trip to the WizKids Hero Clicks website in our rolled. Road to to woads, road to wor- road to worlds, road to raw worlds, road to worlds, the world of. Pfft. All right, save the dates: twenty twenty two Heroes World Championship and Team World Championship. So yes, although there is no teams at nationals, there will be a Team World Champion, which makes me very excited. Yes, his official dates are September fifteenth through the eighteenth. So that is Thursday, September fifteenth. Sunday, September 18th for Worlds. That is going to be... I'm just going to read the thing here. It's not very long, so it'll be easy. After three years! Three years! I get you for three years! Uh, WizKids returns to Graceland Exhibit Center. The Graceland Center in Memphis, Tennessee for 2022 Hero Clicks World Championship and Team World Championship events on Thursday, September 15th through Sunday, September 18th. Come join us for the World Championship events, Battle Royals, Convention Exclusive Sales, and... Much, much more. So typically it's it's Team Worlds, Worlds, Battle Royals, Con Exclusives, and that's that's it. Like typically it's kind of like just yeah. that. Last year there's side two side though. events. So um, they also had the much, did much I say more... last year, 2019. Yeah. Feels like last year because nothing has happened in the interim. No, there were side events. There was Dice Masters and there was, uh, what, Flight Wing? Not Flight Wing. X Wing? I don't know. Whatever WizKids does. Uh, yeah, that was also happening. Um, yeah. Of yeah, course, they so out. Worlds of 2019. No, you know what also, else they did at Worlds of 2019, Simeon? What's that? They debuted Skirmish. Yeah, they did. That was like the new, <laughs> I think you had to win a raffle to get into it. Did, um, yeah. Also, uh, was that not like prior to WWE being released? Because was, I'm pretty sure you could win a raffle to, to get like some WWE stuff. Yeah, um, there was no WWE. So it was also almost a full year before the release of Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage set where we first got the glimpses of uh, like the the alternate chases, like the sketch chases that WizKids got to design. Ooh, yeah, uh, it's it true. WWE we saw when, the next uh, Spider-Man set. They were talking about, I think it was like Big Show, and they were like, uh, I think it was Scott was like, he's got a big guy trait. Is there anyone else that I can think of like who a big guy in uh, WWE is? And I just like screamed like the undertaker. Yeah, and true. Quite embarrassingly. So, but um, that's also where Calder won kibble scuffle for yelling out oh, that he had yes. 78 cats at that time. Hey, it wasn't 78. Oh, okay. 15 or something. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? I Much don't remember hearing of anything about at Worlds in 2019 was the Fantastic Four coming back. That was like True. the Gamma event or something they did like the week yeah. after where we saw Fantastic yeah, Four. Oddly stuff. enough, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, hopefully they do like a fan appreciation kind of thing like that. Not yes. really fan appreciation, but just like a hero clicks whatever. Uh, see, they, they did say... Um, any reservations made prior to receiving the room block code will not be eligible for the discounted rate. I will say about the guest house at Graceland Hotel, one, it's so close to the venue that it's it's stupid not to walk from there if you decide to stay. Um, there's a restaurant in the hotel that's decent. I wouldn't say it's like, you know, the most amazing thing, but it is a good restaurant. Uh, and then on top of that, the hotel room will almost pay for itself just by the fact, well, and this is assuming they do it like they did in 2019, but in 2019, getting the hotel room on the block code also guaranteed you a free battle royale, 
uh, free Graceland um, tickets to like to walk around like the planes and to take the tour and stuff. Which, if you look up online, is stupid expensive. It's like three hundred and fifty dollars. So uh, it got you that. It got you um, the free battle royale, and then it got me. I can't remember exactly, but I I got like an Asgardian storm, a bombshell raven. Uh, another random con exclusive, I think, like, a couple of the special objects, which would have been, like, the Exospecs, Corvus Glaive, and uh, I can't remember. Not Proxima Midnight Spear, but there's like there was some spear. Was it Proxima Midnight Spear? My, I, I think it probably was. But, like, the, the con LEs alone pretty much almost paid for the room. And then on top of that, it was a free Battle Royal. So if they do something like that, I will say the room block is pretty solid for that price, like especially if you're splitting it with another person. And then being able to walk to the venue from there is pretty sweet. So you don't have to like Uber or, you know, have a vehicle already ready to go. Um, it's also like very convenient to be able to walk back and forth between the hotel room and the venue if you like, you know, do four hours of battle royals and need to take like a True. a yeah. nap or whatever nappy there <laughs> yeah um i will say the area that the graceland hotel is in is not the nicest looking <laughs> memphis is so incredibly of... ghetto is what we're is what you're trying to say yeah it's a very weird strip of land there is a lot of like really nice looking stuff on the one side and then quite literally saw like a dude laying cardboard boxes to cover like an entire parking lot on the other at one point and i was like oh what is what is going on here why why all the cardboard boxes on the parking lot uh but no that's hmm. that's my two cents on graceland i will 100 percent be going um you know unless for some reason my work is like hey you've got to go to florida to like learn how to do some stupid stuff um and we'll fire you if you don't go but even then you know what I might just I might just get fired so I can go to Memphis again. Sadly, I thought Memphis was way closer to Nashville because I have family in Nashville. It's like the opposite oh. side. Uh, that's what it, that was the bummer part that I realized when I went to Nashville too. It really sucks. I'm like, oh, we're like nowhere near it. Yeah, nowhere um, near it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's in the same state, the but it's yeah. it's like one of those wide states, and Nashville's in the middle, and Memphis is like barely Long. in that state. Very Nashville's state or Memphis yeah. is basically Arkansas. I'm sure I mean, people from Memphis will will appreciate that I said that they're basically Arkansas. Arkansas, but I mean, like, really, no. the only thing that separates it is like Mississippi River, and that's plus. While you're in Memphis, you Fame. can get that okay. famous Memphis hot chicken that people talk about all the time. That famous like me worldwide that Tennessee famous hot chicken, Memphis hot chicken. Oh, stop. 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 It's Nashville hot chicken. Don't no, it's be Memphis. saying. Don't we dare be hot saying. Chicken. Memphis has like the barbecue, man. Don't oh, be that's saying true. Yeah. We disrespect got... the Nashville hot chicken. They got barbecue. Uh, yeah. No. Um... I'll say this. Not good barbecue either. Why do I want dry barbecue? I rub barbecue out of yeah. here. Dry rub barbecue. I just made someone incredibly mad. I'm not apologize. Stay no, mad. I... Oh, see, it's mall. If world's... I, so when we don't, like, as called or read, we don't have a ton of information on this yet. Um, luckily, we do have the information that it is happening so people can plan around, like, work and stuff. Uh, probably get plane tickets and stuff by now if, you like, you're really sold on it. I'd wait for the hotel room to see, like, if that price to cost ratio or, like, bonus stuff that you get. Because they haven't announced anything else. Like, other than, like, how... <laughs> The, you know, we don't know how, we don't know why, uh, we know where and when, and that's it. So it will depend slightly on what happens, but I'll probably be there either way. Um, the only thing that would really kill it for me is if it was like Friday is Team World, Saturday is the Worlds, and then we're not doing any Battle Royals or anything else. But that's obviously not going to be the case. And I think, you know, Mr. Payne, yeah. Uh, Mr. Penny Kenya is the organizer for these events, these huge events. So it's usually pretty solid. And I'm guessing they've been planning on doing this for a while. So let's see. 
wait and see, I hey. guess. Big shout out. It's the 22nd of May. Happy birthday to old Kenny Pena here today, apparently. Or at least if Facebook's not lying to me. Pena. Then, you know, happy Pena. birthday of Kenny Pena. But it's, uh, hope it's a good one. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, that's the world, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Be, uh, stoked for it. It's it's those dates. Um, And that's all we have now. Hopefully more information next week. That's what I'm hoping for. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All right, so really quick, we got a Malcolm Rush little mini question block. He asked, at the beginning of May, we're getting into it about 20 days later. It's a pretty good turnaround, if you ask me. Um, there are different ages or era of Heroclix. Please give me your answers for each. Heroclix age or era of Heroclix. I let you decide which way you want to answer. Uh, Cindy and I basically said... Uh, everything before cards, uh, we're just saying golden, modern, silver. So, like, stuff that's yeah. before silver is golden, and then all of silver is non-modern, but silver legal, and then modern is modern. That's yeah. what we're doing. Because we're not going to do um, so the whole no cards, for us. cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very distinct. Someone um, should do the math on how many golden age figures there are, like, period. Uh, and then how many like modern to silver age cards? Because at some point silver will uh, eclipse like more gold. than gold. You mean? Yeah, because everything going forward will eventually become silver unless it gets banned or they change like how silver is determined. Like they could do a rotating silver list where, um, like every two years they bump it up a couple sets. That'd be like wacky, but they could do that where silver's just like four five years of rotated uh modern age stuff uh but no like according to what we know silver will eventually become the biggest format whereas currently uh mo or golden is everything from 2016 right uh, um yeah no. it's like no pre-2016 well yeah so like may of i don't know june so civil war organized play was in june 1st of 2016 so from 2016 of june all the way to uh according to this website april 30th of 2002 so quite a few sets in between there <laughs> the majority yeah. of the indie sets for sure but yeah all right so now first question is which hero click set changed the game the most for each age or era of hero clicks for better or worse uh, so I went with Golden Age. I'm saying, and to be fair, obviously this is all biased when I was playing everything, but I think the set that changed uh, the game the most uh, is going to be War of Light for Golden Age. That's what oh. I went with. Um, okay. Simeon, what did you pick? I went with Hammer of Thor. Alternatively, Ooh. Infinity Challenge. <laughs> okay. Basically, the two sets that really that kicked it off. So Infinity Challenge being the original set, Hammer of Thor being the returning set. But... Yeah, I mean, n kind of a cop out. Not really. They didn't really change the game as much as they were the game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, like bringing the game back or turning, you know, making the game e exist, you know, is is pretty uh, pretty huge. I would say. Yeah. Next up is silver. Uh, I said this is more aligned with how Simeon answered his golden question. Uh, Mighty Thor. Um, so not the first silver set, but I think the set that uh, aims silver the most. Obviously, there's a massive rules overhaul with Mighty Thor. Uh, Mangog, Surtur, the Colossals uh, were huge. Unimind defined the meta until he left, you know. Um, never really won any, like, WizKids tournaments, but still, he was always that threat that existed. Um, the objects being so many put into a main booster set like that um yeah i think it really defined the age yeah i i have to also go with as far as silver goes what you see on most teams uh so far actually from silver because most of it's just modern with some silver uh it's either id cards from sets that aren't included in silver which is hard to hard to like say yeah. that would be a set um, or it's Colossals from either AI or uh, the Mighty Thor. And even though Mighty Thor wasn't the first Colossal Retaliator set, I think 
it's hard to say that it wasn't like the most solid best you know i mean yeah 10 point carnage is definitely yeah. i i won't say 10 point carnage is better than 15 point adam but man is it really good and like 25 point surter 30 point mangog i mean obviously i had a mangog hit like five rollouts in one turn against me Ooh, dang because i didn't have pen damage and he has impervious he's like the only colossal that was ever given impervious that i'm like on the retail click i guess um yeah. i think that's right yeah and i think he been, is yeah it had to have been mangog but yeah definitely mighty thor for that one and then for modern, uh, the one that changed up modern the most, I think it's pretty easy. I went with relatively the same answer I gave for silver, uh, and that's Wonder Woman. I mean, massive yep. rules overhaul. The, I mean, but even then, uh, shifting focus Wonder Woman, the objects, super rare Flash, the Secret Six team members, like they are still helping define the meta we know it today. I think they're yeah. just huge. So yeah, yeah. Once like once again, Wonder Woman 80th did not like. It didn't make this stuff. Uh, it didn't. It, it didn't create the sidekicks and captains and all that stuff. But the way that it like brought them into like a, a different kind of like limelight. Um, yeah, there's no like hero clicks competitive list out there right now that doesn't have something from Wonder Woman element on it really. Yeah. Um, but like the the objects. All of the monsters in it, Chip. Angle Man, for uh, crying out yeah, loud. Yeah, Angle Man. Insane. Used. Meta defining. All the time. Uh, the Super yeah. Felix, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know, Felix like, Felix. he was an M MVP on the last tournament I played in, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right, uh, next one is which set best represents each age or era of hero clicks? Um, presentations. Obviously, a little bit different than what changed it the most. Um, so, as far as represents, this is where I chose uh, Hammer of Thor. I think Hammer of Thor is a really solid way to represent all of Golden Age. Um, you know, it brings in that that new era style of Golden Age. It also just feels old enough. It still has weird dials, it still has the weird cards, but I think having cards makes it fit a bit better. I think. A set that helps represent Golden Age shouldn't be Oreo, in my opinion. So I think Hammer of Thor, uh, to me, best represents Golden Age. For sure, yeah. For me, and this can be kind of like, it can be a little all over the place, but I went with the, the Watchmen set. And so, okay. for me, okay. the thing that most Do you like to explain your answer? <laughs> yeah, the thing that most exemplifies Golden Age to me is all the properties that we used to have. So I guess Watchmen's technically DC. So you could also say like Street Fighter or Halo or, you know, the original Trek sets, I guess, even though those were just chips. Yeah. Um, but no, like all of the indie properties, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, uh, almost all of that is golden now. And after rotation this year, all indie sets will be out of modern, period. Like, Turtles will be yeah. gone, WWE will be gone, uh, and that's, you know, there used to be a time where there was Iron Maiden, Halo, uh, you know, Fellowship of the Ring, all the, like, Lord of the Rings stuff yeah. was coming out, Dodo, like, we had all of this stuff, like, very back-to-back, -back, very, like, quick succession. It felt like, at that point in time, in Heroclix time, that... You know, we were shooting for like the moon as far as like Hero Clicks properties were going. Uh, we had so much, we were so spoiled, and now it's just basically yeah. all done. Um, yeah. And so that's that's the golden for me, as depressing as it is. Uh, yeah, golden is definitely any of the indie sets, including the actual titled indie set. Indie so set. maybe that's wow. the one I should have wow. said at the front. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all right. And then. Golden, next is silver. Uh, I am going to choose the first silver set, and that is Superior Foes of Spider-Man. Uh, it's also like a silver set that if I had to choose like any silver set to play, or, you know, says represent Silver Age, I would still say Spider-Man. Uh, Stiltman, Devil Dinosaur, uh, the first, you know, usage of these cards, the fun Spider-Man chases. Uh, 
Fear of Spider-Man is an awesome set, and I think yeah. it gives you that silver feel more Especially than any other set in silver. The uh, the, the what uh, sketch variants? Yeah, that's the yeah yeah, yeah yeah a very <laughs> obviously the biggest <laughs> thing of course. Duh. No, all sketch agree. variants. Um, I had somebody like talking about how. Uh, they couldn't think of anything from Superior Foes. And this wasn't a competitive player, so I'm not going to put them on blast or anything. But oh, they, sure. said they couldn't think of anything from Superior Foes that would still hold up today. Mm. And yeah. I was like, really? Like, the prime Captain Stacy isn't good for 30 points? The 100-point mm. the uh, Devil Dino isn't good for, like, those points? I mean, even, like, the handstand Spider-Man is still pretty darn solid for the points. Uh, this is... You know, don't forget this is where Call and Help from the Spider Verse began, which is pretty crazy that it's this long ago and we're still getting those. Uh, the Mephisto, the uh, Chameleon, all of the like crazy stuff in the set. I would say Frogman at one point because I still own like six, but until WizKids fixes Knockback, uh, man, that would be a really good legacy card. Fix Frogman for me, somebody. Ah. <sighs> I don't know how you're going to do it, but man. Just Someone finds the fix to Frogman. Frogman. 10-point Thug. Uh, overdrive. Oh, yeah. All of that. Oh, stuff. gosh. Overdrive. How do you forget about Overdrive? Yeah. How does anyone forget about Overdrive? I don't. Like, I do understand that a few people, like, realized very quickly uh, you could just blow up the object so he couldn't make his vehicle. But, I mean, you combine Overdrive with uh, the earth x tinker and then you can just make objects so you don't even have to worry about that there's there's a lot of like sinister syndicate coolness throughout yeah. Silver. oh there's tons of it dude oh doc ock it's amazing obviously the sinister syndicate that was like their best showing set maybe second best showing the earth x and syndicate were really really cool uh, the sinister syndicate and this were were really dope um and then for modern a set that we would say defines modern for me personally uh, i said abpi I'm like you know, it's almost obviously not modern anymore, but to me, it's got the really cool iconic objects, really cool iconic characters, and when I just think about just like a really solid set from commons up for modern, that to me fits the vibe, majority vibe of the modern era. I, I had to choose, I had to choose uh, Avengers Black Panther and the Illuminati. I think it's awesome. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, if we're talking about stuff that could rotate, yeah, that's a that's a pretty solid one. Um, there was so much good stuff in uh, the Avengers Black Panther Illuminati. I think I have to give it back to Wonder Woman 80th, though. Uh, as far as something that really represents what is modern now, I guess. Because, you know, if you had asked me prior to Wonder Woman 80, I definitely would have said... Like, any set up until Wonder Woman 80th, I would have said ABPI in Modern. But, no, Wonder Woman 80th with the objects, with the the huge cast of characters. Um, now, mostly mostly tied to, like, Wonder Woman, but not all. Um, and then just so much, like, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, that set was just good. Like, there was a lot of super rares that you could pull that weren't amazing, but, I mean, like, yeah. Ares, good. Green Lantern, good. Uh, the Flash, yikes, good. <laughs> like, Lex Luthor, good. Felix Faust, good. Hades, eh. Uh, and then there was the other one. Uh, don't let the Rainbow Kids hear you say the hate on Hades. Oh, like, man. They freaking love The Hades, Superman dude. Wonder Woman Hades, does anyways. I love, for some reason, and he's, like, ten times the points. Um, this Hades I have yet to use, though. I've had one since the set dropped, and I still have not used it. Yeah. All right, his next one is, which set do you enjoy playing the most in each age or era of Hero Clicks? Um, uh, so far, as far as Golden goes, this is sort of a tie, but I'm giving it Deadpool. It would have been Deadpool or Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'm giving it to Deadpool. Deadpool is such a wacky, fun set, I think, for Sealed. Wacky fun set in general. It's the first set I ever bought a brick of. I love the uh, 2014 Deadpool set for Golden Age. Uh, absolutely love that set. Zombie chases, all the fun Deadpool figures, the Ward balloons. I love it. Uh, 
Simeon, what is your, your Golden Age set that you just have the most fun playing out of? Uh, it's got to be Fear Itself. Yeah. <sighs> um, whether figures on like the field or sealed, I mean, obviously it was made to be sealed. Uh, I bought Fear Itself Booster Brick a little while after it was no longer... Like, so it came out in 2013. I didn't start playing until about 2014, 2015. And I bought a Fear Itself uh, brick, and we played Sealed. And, man, what a great Sealed set. Like, Monkey King, I will never play him ever again outside of Sealed. But what a fun <laughs> figure in Sealed. Um, yeah. Same with, like, Thule Society Priest. Obviously, like, you could, you could probably play them outside of it especially if there's like a way to get them to click three, uh, maybe on like a reverse dial, whatever, probably 21 points for prob is more expensive than other things you could do now. But no, like again, all of the, the super rares, even like most of the rares in the set were just really interesting and cool. Kurth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Fear itself. See, that's a set that I wish I was like playing around and being able to like play some seal of it like it, it is a really cool awesome set also a shame they don't have steve rogers in it but besides that it is a solid set it's got a lot of unique characters a lot of random you know you just hear it's all it's fun uh let's go ahead and do what is it silver age uh i just come as surprise to nobody but the earth x set I love the Earth X part of that set anyways, um, and I like the Venom chases, so that is my go-to Silver Age set that I, I really do enjoy playing out of a lot. Uh, Simeon. For Silver Age, I went with TMNT 4. So I, okay. It's not really unplugged, a Unplugged, man. An yeah, unplugged guy. Unplugged. Uh, I mean, man, I don't even care about the main set that much. Those fast forces, the continue tokens was probably like one of the most unique concepts that they adapted. Quite literally, like bringing like arcade to, like the only way it could have been more like an arcade is if you had to physically hand your opponent a quarter. Um, and I mean, you did. You gave them twenty five points, so it was basically like that. Really the shredder right. was nuts for one hundred and fifty points or even less. And then all of the bystanders were just super fun. Uh, obviously, Mudman was the big one, but even like the boxing bot is now a ten for two with flurry for ten points. Um, the yeah, there's I mean, there's not a lot better <laughs> bystanders that they have, but like there's you know the Mauser that's tiny sized and had sidestep for ten points. There's a lot of fun stuff, and that was just the uh, fast forces. The main set had the Shredder Illusions. It had the Kang with a 50-50 shape change before that was, like, super common. Uh, the Double Perplex shut off shape change and Perplex. Um, I didn't care about the chases in the main set that much, but other than the sculpt reused, it was a really cool set. And I wasn't even mad about the sculpt reused because I didn't buy into the other Turtle sets that much. Yeah. There, it was only a handful of sculpt reuse, though, too, because still so much of it was the the eight bit, right? Yeah, so it was whatever sculpt thirty two bit, Splinter, whatever. Splinter, Karai, and Alapex, right? Um, that was it. Alapex. Well, then they they redid the uh, the tails of the TMNT sculpts, so the super rare turtles, Donatello, Leonardo, oh. those were all reused from. Forgot the, about like, them. Twenty seventeen series. I don't know. I'm not a big cartoon turtle fan. I liked the comics, but I have not kept up with the cartoons. So I, I want to say people have called that the 2017 turtle series, but I don't actually know. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's 2017 or whatever. Yeah, I've still never watched any of it. I don't, don't know if I ever will. Heard good things, though. It's good. Yeah. yeah turtle set. I gotta say, I didn't, I didn't expect you to say unplugged. That's wild to me, dude. Uh, and then uh, for modern, I uh, just, you know, I've had the most fun with Empire so far with modern. Um, I love APBI and I do love the Captain America set. But, uh, honestly, Empire uh, had like the most stuff come out where I just wanted to build around it with Ultrons, uh, with Captain America, a lot of fun commons like that She Hulk, uh, you know, a handful of other stuff. The Scroll Spy, the Krees were really fun addition to everything. So I've been, just, I've been having fun with Empire. Chases are fun, Captain Thanos is fun. 
uh, you know, Ricky is fun. I, I just, I'm so far having the most fun right now. I would say out of Empire, I've definitely built around it the most. Yeah. Um, so, am I allowed to say Disney Plus for this? Because that would be my see. Favorite. Well, I would say Disney Plus too. If we're if we're allowed to say yeah. it, uh, I would also change mine to Disney Plus. If that's, we're not allowed to awesome. say Disney Plus. Then I'll also say the Eternals movie to Gravity Feed. Yeah, don't like lie. Calder. Don't like Calder. Don't say. Don't. Um, don't. don't Cersei, no. Icarus, no. 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 You know, I I just don't know how I would play the game without both the common Are and the this to me, Simeon? Uh, I, no. <laughs> Empire's painful. the first set in a very long time that combined uh, mutants, Fantastic Four, um, random cosmic people, Avengers. You know, all of that stuff. And they did it in like a very interesting way. You had Madam Hydra, you had Ga- or Taskmaster, not Gasmaster. Although, <laughs> whoa, a little bit more interesting if he was a Gasmaster. <laughs> um, way more interesting. Like Magneto, you had, I mean, all these interesting villains. And then you also had like Koya. Speaking of Koya, so we recently played a Bizarro Dial event. I played Koya for the first time because I, I've been chasing that Venom Magneto. So surprise, surprise, I have a bunch of Empire now, um, and yeah, that's yes. another reason. The chases in this set, for the most part, I mean, for for half part, are good. You know, for for about half of them, they're really good. Um, but no, I played this Koya at a hundred points, starting on his last click, click eleven. I also played Hulkling, the Super Air Hulkling, for 60 points on his double royal rollout click. So he's double rollout on his bottom dial. Of course, like uh, Bizarro dial started, starting on last click going up. Um, double rollout, Cosmic Energy, Scroll Team Ability. So his shape change is 50-50, can't be outwitted. And then he's also got Super Senses. Plus, he has Mastermind. Plus... He makes his own mastermind fodder. So I was rolling really hot with Hulkling right off the bat. And then the game, because it was casual, it went long enough and we went fast enough that Koya got to nine of the Kotati plant markers. So at one point, I was just KOing stuff by the one unavoidable damage that his plant markers do. And that's that's pretty crazy. Like, obviously... You won't get that far in, like, a modern competitive game. I can't see a modern competitive game getting to eight turns or nine, sadly. Uh, I don't see Koya surviving to eight turns or nine either, especially if your opponent knows what he does at all. But <laughs> yeah. that was pretty wacky. That was that was a fun game because, yeah, right up until the end, before Koya died, I thought I was going to just, you know, ping damage people to death. Ants, baby. <laughs> they'll be messing with the salad yeah. uh, all right okay um last question here which hero click set do you want WizKids to do a complete legacy card set to bring the whole set into modern now i i answered this question with 20th anniversary in mind and i thought this would be really cool to be fair i'm cheating a little bit i'm choosing two sets but uh Marvel 10th and DC 10th anniversary get full legacy cards. I think would be really, really awesome. Ooh. I think that'd be amazing. Yeah, 20th that would anniversary, be a really good one. Uh, WizKids like choice, uh, and there are also two sets I think are awesome. And I think like the game, if you wanted to legacy card something and choose iconic stuff, that's what the 10th anniversary sets were: iconic looks for Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk. Or Spider-Man, you know, thing. Like, these are really, really, really cool and beautiful. Like, gorgeous sculpts, first of all. Um, majority of all those sculpts are just absolutely gorgeous and really, really cool. So, yeah. Well, uh, it was really cool. Like, they got great chases. And it's only a few chases, right? So, I think if we legacy carded this entire set, I don't think people would get as upset. Um, yeah, I think the 10th anniversary sets. I cheated a little bit, Malcolm, by choosing two. But I would say... 10th anniversary sets would be well, awesome I mean, legacy yeah, card sets. You'd legacy the Marvel one in one set and the DC one in like a separate thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do want to tie this into like another discussion that isn't really yeah. worth touching on. Uh, so I'm going to go with my favorite set that I have the most of. Um, well, not even the most of because I only have one of each. But uh, no, it'd be the Wolverine and the X-Men set. So obviously the Phoenix 5 could use a 
you know, whatever you want to call it, a nice revamp on point cost. Um, some cool powers would be neat, but like Cyclops's dial is roughly worth about I don't I don't know top dial his 295 point line. I will say with all of his traits and powers as is in today's game is it'd be pushing it to say it's worth 200 points, but it's probably like 175 ish because he really gets bad towards like the bottom dial, and that's true for all the Phoenix Five. Seen either multiple point point lines which they already or like they already both have the 295 and 150 seeing those two point lines right. changed and then maybe seeing like a 50 point line for their last three clicks each would be something worth actually playing um maybe reworking their traits i guess because that seems like something that they like doing more than changing the point cost uh, yeah the team base figures i don't know it's never be gotten pretty drastic outside of like the team bases so it'd be cool to see the team base figures actually worth playing uh not on just the team base it's like actually and i'm not saying legacy card the team base i'm just saying the figures that would have gone on it like right. the le's and stuff uh, like, like tie him with it or whatever yeah also one of the funnest magneto sculpts the prime and non-prime on his attached to like his little eye beam not the best magneto sculpt but definitely a fun one uh, here's another thing. Uh, make the non-prime and the prime jubilee just stupid busted and make everyone need one because apparently they're still hard to find. <laughs> Dude, that's that uh you can't get zombie. Uh, so not zombie, vampire. Vampire. Jubilee, I played yeah. her, I played her twice, I should know. Uh vampire jubilee, dude. She's insane. I remember when I first got into the game, be like, oh wow, a vampire version of Jubilee? That's cool. I don't own a Jubilee. And then I saw how much she cost and I was like, mm. Never mind, I'll I'm be all right then. Not, I'm going to keep not owning a Jubilee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I'm okay with it then. I didn't like her in the TV show that much. It was fine. Yeah, um, that would be dope. Imagine the price, the price hike on them plus the Phoenix 5. It would be wild, though. Um, it would be gnarly. Oh, yeah. Oh, and sorry. Phoenix just, 5 are already... Still, already kind of spendy yeah, still. Yeah, with the Phoenix 5 and... Might be some of the worst expensive dials you can buy. Oh, yeah. Only Bad. display purposes, like, quite yeah. literally. You um, look super pretty, though. Like, yeah. being honest, yeah. Yeah, effects-wise. And I, I will say some unnamed website that I'm looking at has a Cyclops on a black dial, which is oh. weird, because that's... It's not right. They, yeah, they had the colored, like, translucent flame bases, like and then they all have the right? flame effects. So the Phoenix 5 with a full Phoenix Force, which, I mean, maybe goes for 20 or 25, but then also the Dark Phoenix Cyclops Colossal that was part of the Avengers vs. X-Men um, oh. organized play kit. If you have all, what is that, seven? If you have all seven of those items with cards, you can get, like, $225 still, or, like, you know, thereabouts, <laughs> add or plus, you know, plus or minus. I said add or plus. Yeah, you could add or add to that cost. Uh, no, plus or minus like twenty five dollars here or there, depending on the how common they are at that current juncture. But no, they still fetch quite a bit, and I know it'll never get legacy carded because, quite literally, that Phoenix Five set would go from you know the two hundred ish dollar amount to like five hundred overnight. Would be uh. I would say that, that would make sense, though. It'd be insane when you think about it, but, like, it makes sense. Yeah. Jump. Big jump. Yeah. Yikes. And I'm just looking at all these 295, 150 dials. Oof, big yikes. Um, it's speaking, Sorry, I just realized a few things about uh, my own set I chose. I would like to see a Marvel 10th Iron Man, because his whole thing was that if he hits you, you could just turn off the effects of your relics. No, 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 sorry. If he's hit... You have to, like, roll a dice to see if he even takes damage if they were, like, assigned a relic or whatever. You change that to now if they are equipped. Oh, it yeah. makes it really cool. Like, like that brings him just kind of back into, like, how the game is played, changes him for a new era. That's really cool. Um, let's go ahead and move on from Malcolm's questions so we can get to all these freaking Discord questions. If you want to ask us questions on Discord, 
Uh, first of all, Discord is Patreon exclusive, which is awesome. We have a super cool, I mean, it's not awesome that it's exclusive, but only for a dollar you can get the full Discord. And I think the Discord alone is worth a dollar. Not that, you know, you also get a one entry into the giveaway each month, which is always nice to throw your hat into the ring. But Discord is pretty, Discord is pretty amazing. I, I like it, like it a lot. We have tons of fun on it. We have quite a few uh, active members in the Discord. And if you just sort of like looking at other people talk, you can go ahead and lurk also. We are, uh, we are a Patreon of choices. If you don't want to be in the Discord, you don't have to join it, and you can leave if you want. I tried to leave another Patreon's Discord that I was in, um, and they added me back to it, uh, and it really bothers me. Um, this is a not, this is not a Heroclix Patreon, either. Um, this is, like, something else totally, but they play, like, Among Us every freaking day, it feels like. And instead of doing, like, an at Among Us, like, making their own at, like, how we have at Bad Sam, just to ping people that want to play right. Bad Sam, Speaking they do we, an at. We do, we do Bad Sam occasionally in our Discord. Yes, uh, it's do. a much looser version um, than what you see or what you hear on the on show. It's, it's very casual. It's but, also filled with just before and after, like, fun hanging out discussion, which is really yeah. cool, too. Um, but no, see me, they play Among Us and they ping everyone. They do the at everyone. Oh, the at like, everyone. here's the new room code. All right, at everyone. That was a good time. And I'm like, stop. You I will stop. say, That's yeah, why I it's left. harder to, unless you have like a dedicated channel, it's harder to at everyone um, without like quite literally annoying at least 95% of the people in most <sighs> Discord channels. I will say, uh, that's just my opinion um, as one of those people that has too many discords and i've muted 90 percent of them because there's just one too many channels two too many people and three too much garbage that i just was not even something that i needed to listen to it was like you know like the uh the food channel for my marvel strike force discord you know Oh, by right. the way, I'm playing Marvel Strike Force again. <laughs> Are you now? Gosh, Simeon. Back on the Marvel Man, Strike nothing Force Nothing makes line. you appreciate hero clicks like a digital game trying to make you pay $50 for a digital copy of one character. And it's like, sure, I I paid, it. I've paid I $50 it. for a hero click before, but I also, if I wanted to, could play 10 different Wolverines for under $50. Marvel Strike Force has one Wolverine, and if I want him to be better, I have to pay more money or just spend an absurd amount of time collecting shards. Whoever invented mm. shards for, like, mobile games, I'd like a word. You die. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to go mobile games. back in time to when you decided that was a good idea and just sh shake you violently. Sh Gosh. Shake you and be like, do you understand? what you'll do to my life <laughs> i have Gosh, a full-time job how am i supposed to collect shards all day all i want to do is play with the sinister six why are they all legendary characters that i can't collect easily there's not even uh, a way to collect dr octopus right now uh, you go to dr octopus and you go to like how to unlock and there's nothing you can't there. pay for him. You like I can't this outright bad, buy him. This is him. a bad side tangent. We got to stop. No I can't. More I can't forces. do battles for him. There's no uh, cards or shards. Like maybe he'll there's come nothing. Out eventually. Oh gosh. Now how many Doctor Octopuses I can get in Hero Clicks? Yeah. A few. A lot. Doctor Octopus. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Simeon, Simeon, not going on the uh, REV. A lot about shards here, dude. So All I want to say Discord is, I, I really appreciate uh, Hero Clicks after playing okay. Marvel Strike Force. Okay. Uh, right. Now the shard talk what was the is Discord done. Discord question was. Uh, <laughs> did we yeah, even start answering them yet, Simeon? We just totally derailed. I mean, we both kind of did. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep this relatively quick. I got a timer going. See so if we can wrap this up in like twenty minutes or so. Alexi and Chainer asks, how would you feel about tarot cards if you had to pay two points per card? For a minimum deck size, that is ten points, so five cards. Alternatively, would you think it would be better to pay flat amounts of points to include a tarot card deck of any size, five cards or greater, 
or paying more points to have more options but less consistency probably wouldn't be worth it. Uh, I think he answered his own question kind of in the second yeah, part. Like, no offense. Part. But it's like, yeah, typically in a deck, I feel like most deck building games, you want to have less cards so that you can have a more consistent deck when you shuffle. Um, as far as to go back as the two points per card, uh, and, you know, if we say a five card minimum, I'd be okay with that. That means it's ten points. I just want you to pay something. Yeah. That's my only hang-up about tarot cards. If Even if it was, like, three points, you know, 15 points for a five-card deck, I would be okay with that. There's, yeah, so you know, like, we've had resources where they had uh, points that would, like, accumulate depending on how many things you were, pay- like, playing on them, you know. Um, you'd play, like, the minimum point value for a lantern battery, but then you also had to pay for, like, the, the decoy, the nurse, the, you know, crossbow, whatever. All the, like, things that also went on it. Now, it was a smaller cost than, like, the relic cost, I believe, but re- then, like, tarot cards, mind you, are basically a resource. Your deck is basically a resource that's just super simple. Uh, the fact that it does not have a cost to it is kind of silly to me. The fact, yeah. that, and maybe it's good that it doesn't have a cost because that means there's less stuff that your opponent just can't score on your team. I already am a little annoyed when my opponent has, like, they paid for a map and, like, a map bonus and they pay for, like, the elemental converter and then, like, I just can't score those things unless I kill their whole team. Um, well, Actually, the elemental converter, I think you score if you KO that character, right? But either way, like, it is rough having points that are inaccessible by normal means. And unless you plan on, like, tabling every opponent, there's always going to be, you know. So as much as I wouldn't like to see more points that are just off to the sideline that I can't score, I do think a like a two-point cost for each tarot card would be like it'd be one something i'm still willing to pay and two something that actually makes you think rather than just like these will be on every single competitive team going forward it'll be on every silver team going forward like every time there's a competition that allows tarot cards which will be most of them uh, there will be tarot cards on every single team and if there's not you'll be playing at a disadvantage so which sucks Yeah, it's just something that if it added point costs, so even 10 points, 10 points is, you know, that's two Disney Plus objects. That's um, like two two Friends of Humanity or something. Oh, obviously, Um, both those things are completely equal. Oh, definitely. (laughs) Yeah, Friend of Humanity (laughs) or, you know, Captain Carter Shield. I can't decide. Uh, Friend of Humanity. (laughs) Um, Anything. I would say if you made it, Let's say you make tarot cards four points each. So it's minimum 20. And then every card Ooh. over that, you get to like deduct two points. So if I if I play six or seven cards, uh, I'm, in, I'm like deducting half of what the card costs. So if I play seven, I... like for the first five, I'm paying 20. And then it goes down to 18, 16. Because the more cards I play the worse chances I have of ever actually getting the card that right. I want flipped. Now I could still stack the deck probably pretty good. Um, but like the chances of me flipping the right card at the right time, or even a card that I want in a game, cause you'd <laughs> yeah. have to go to turn what five to get through five normal cards. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of ways they could rework it. it will they probably not? I don't, feel like they'll errata an entire new resource unless it gets like they might just outright ban it from certain things instead i mean i mean i would honestly i I know people are excited for the tarot card thing i can't work up excitement if they said it was only legal for x of swords i would be okay with that i'd be 100 percent fine with whatever it is whatever it ends up being free or not said it was only like x of swords legal i'd be like all right cool fine um, I don't want to get off on too much arrow card discussion, but uh, yeah. Uncanny Cause says, now that we have a Chase Legacy, do you think we will get a Prime Legacy card? Even if you don't think we will, he asks, what are five primes you would not like slash be mad? Seed. 
Um, would not like. I would kind of mostly be mad if they chose lame primes. Not even like competitive primes like Jakeem or like we'll say Anarchy uh, or like you know Bat Microphone Batman or like whatever. Right? I would be more mad if it was like I'm Sasquatch from Invincible Iron Man. Oh, no, I'd be yeah. like really. That sucks, dude. You know, like if they did Sasquatch or like Jolt from Captain America, you know, just like if they chose lame primes, that would be the only primes I'd even be mad. Uh, gosh, Deadpool had some bad primes. They made like a prime. Uh, oh, yeah. They made f- all of these shifting focus Deadpools. Yeah, I made all the shifting focus Deadpools again and I'd be like, why though? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that would be those would be the primes I would hate. I know it's not really a total like top five. That'd be um, very rough. Be super rough. Oh, like if they made Looker, Joker's wild. They made a, a legacy prime guard Rooker or Rooker Looker. That would be rough. Um, yeah, yeah. That would mostly be lame ones. I'd be okay with like choosing Simeon set. You know, potentially Captain Stacy yeah. or uh, you know. Who else would be like a competitive prime? I mean, the ones I meant, Jakeem Thunder. Like, you know, even if you made the competitive ones back, to make. I would be okay with them making competitive primes. You know, oh, dude, Scourge. I loved that new Scourge. I love, oh, yeah. Yeah, I love for all that so stuff. My problem with um, that, though, is like, well, one, he's already in silver, which that doesn't disqualify him from being brought back to modern. But how do you rework that Scourge? Because he was so. Like, he was so well done. Obviously, he wasn't, like, overly competitive. How do you rework that Scourge without just, like, leaving him the same? Maybe altering his point cost? Oh, he's already so good. Um, Pretty so cool, dude. Man, like, the only thing that he had going against him was mind control. Like, that was quite literally the only foil to, like, that last laugh marker. Outside of just, like, ignoring him while he was standing on it, I guess. Um, Or, like... Uh, could you even knock him back? No, it was like protected from opposing effects or something. Effects, yeah. Moved. Sadly, yeah. like the only like one workaround that I would actually just give him is like uh, I'd be targeted by mind control. I'd give him protected mind control there yeah. because he can be mind controlled and then moved off of it, which is mega that was lame. the yeah. I think I I played one in like a mighty Thor sealed, and I happened to have one of the only mind controllers, Enchantress, and so yeah, she managed to. Also, she has free all opposing characters within six squares may each be moved one square. So I don't remember if that worked against him, what exactly his wording was. So his wording was uh, modifies defense plus two, max of one damage, can't be moved or placed. So, yeah, he she couldn't use that, but she could mind control him. Then he was friendly, and then you could move him while he was technically friendly. Um, so it, No, it sucks. To get to get to my answer of the question, sorry. Yes, there you go. Um, I'm just bopping around too much. It's all right, it's okay. Uh, let's see. It was uh, Prime Legacy card. Do you think we'll ever get one? Yes, I do. Um, I think at this point it would be silly to not think we'll get one when we've gotten. People keep calling Legacy Thanos a like a super rare. That was basically a chase back then. The, like the unique, right, like, the unique. I get like the rarity wasn't the same, but like chases are easier to pull than like the chases back then were more like ultra chases today, and um, the like super rares, quote unquote super rares, were more like gravity feed super rares, where it's like one per thing, so you're never really guaranteed. It was more high rarity for a super rare than what we have today, where you get like four in a brick or three in a brick. Uh, but anyhow, even if you don't think we will, what are five primes that you would not like or be mad that they legacied? Man, it'd be hard for me to really pick a lot that I would hate. Because um, I would I would really like to see Q Prime get a legacy card so that Gosh. I can sell mine for a stupid amount. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Prime Storm. That's one that I never... Never saw, like, the benefit of owning. Uh, it was a cool figure, cool sculpt. I had the Shadow King 2x2. Two two. So, oh, by Prime Storm, I mean the X-Men animated series 2x2 two two Prime, the Super Air Prime, where they introduced Prime Colossals, <laughs> mind you. Um, that's one I wouldn't like to see. Would kind of hate that, actually. Uh, 
the Baron Mordo from AVPI because that was like the one super rare where the non-prime was worth way more right off the bat. Um, I would really hate to see them legacy card the Squadron Supreme because I have yet to collect them all. And oh, yeah. most of them were primes. Most of them were super rare primes up it's... until Power Princess. Our Princess, yeah. And they were like, nah. And then they went back to super rare prime with Nighthawk. So it tells you how much they care about Power Princess, I guess. Uh, yeah. So that, yeah, that those are a bunch that I really. Whiz kids? Yeah. Is that the only female? She's also female in the whole one team. of the worst of the squadrons. Supreme. She's also bad. Yeah. She's just, yeah. Like all of them do really good stuff. And then she's like, Ah, charge super strength some stuff um no but yeah like the, all of those these are mostly collection purposes black lantern zoom i think if they ever do primes doing super rare primes would be really bad because i mean that's essentially more rare than a chase so you know like we said before like a chase However, already... they do legacy card one prime has oh, to yeah. be triathlon Obviously. Oh, for the ID Half the legacy. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, that triple perplex. Uh, Pretty no, good. Uh, was it? Yeah, perplex, yeah, triple but perplex. only to target himself so, three, three times. times per turn with hypersonic. Yeah, Almost good for 90 points. Would be a lot better for 40. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, can't Our use slash hero close stealth, bets. Which is, the, can't use shape changer stealth was cool because that was like a direct reference yep. to the uh, scroll Trolls. invasion. Yeah. So the only time he was relevant to me. Uh, all right. Next up, we have Chance the Bookkeeper asks, if you could make a standard booster set using Bioshock 1 and 2, brainstorm some ideas for how you'd make it. Team abilities, rarity, separate powers, WB. Um, so I know you're a big man with a drill arm. And <laughs> That's you have two. yeah, honey juice makes you yeah, bees from there's, your hands. There's and bad other guys things. that are called splicers. There's yeah. this stuff called Adam that you have to collect. Yeah, that's right, Adam. Yeah. That's right. Um, and then you have tiny children, little girls there's that help tonics you. And uh, yeah, um, um, there's also a, you're the big daddy. Apparently, somewhere in there, there's also the big sister. Is that correct? Is that that's in two? Yeah, two. introduce the big sister. You're you become the big daddy in Bioshock Two. In the first one, you're just this like brainwashed, uh, genetically modified boy guy. Guy, okay. Yeah, that like you starts with a plane crash. You swim. You find okay. Rapture, the city. So, to go down. Um, okay. yeah. Okay. No, so like, there's a ton of stuff you could do. You do like. The, like Chase Andrew Ryan and uh, what was the bad guy? Gosh, the Andrew Ryan and the uh, the fish man, the guy who had the fish place. Mm, yep. Fish man. So uh, if you couldn't tell, I've never played either. Bio- I've actually played no Bioshock game. Um, still haven't, still won't. Uh, however, I have played... PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale and a playable fighter character in that game is, of course, Big Daddy from Bioshock 2. So, only thing I could talk about is just his moveset, which was like pretty solid. Um, heavy hitter guy had some neat moves. Fontaine's um, Fishery, that's what it was. That's all I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, let's see. I'll get the swim standard ability, right? Swimmer because sure. underwater, maybe? Sure, yeah. Maybe that's uh, their, like, traits. There's definitely no one that flies in the first two. Yeah, no one flies. Um, as far as team Probably. abilities, so team abilities would be hard for, like, Simeon, splicers. Sorry, really quickly, could you make a booster set? It would have to be, like, a 50-character oh, booster? Would it would have absolutely. to be gravity feed. Yeah. Oh, really? There's oh, enough, really? Oh. There's enough oh. generics to fill out, like, 14 of the comments. Enemies wise. Okay. Yeah. Mostly cool, cool. enemies. Yeah. That's what um, I was curious about. All right, and then dope. there's enough named characters and stuff like that. Then there's, there's also enough like objects and stuff. Cause so in the first one, it's a lot about like upgrading your weapons and your tonics and like stuff like that. I think it's called tonics. I don't know why I keep feeling like that. Doesn't I think he right. drinks some stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> he checks a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, like you could definitely fill out a fifty-figure booster set between one and two. 
Uh, it'd be a little hard on just the first one, but it could probably be done. And I mean, there's also like the sentry robots and stuff. Uh, I don't know how you would do all of those, but some of them are like flying and some of them are just like stationary. Uh, team abilities, it's a lot of like, so you'd have to do it weird because some of the splicers are completely different than other ones. Those are like the bad guys that have superpowers. There's like the spider ones that climb along like the roofs and stuff. So I could say like improved movement uh, elevated, but that's not all of them. So you also have like the Houdini splicers that like just disappear and then reappear, kind of like phasing teleport. Uh, but again, that wouldn't really work for a team ability. So yeah, I would like to see similar to WWE, a indie title, whatever indie title we get again, if we ever get one again, something that incorporates really thematic, interesting stuff. I will say WWE was more for gameplay purposes, at least in like the multiverse games and the single universe games, WWE team ability was just like the pin and whatever stuff, ropes, that kind of thing. But for the multiverse games, it was literally just did not make any thematic sense. Like nobody in WWE history just, like sprints from the starting area to the middle of the ring and then no one can see them until they get hit, you know. Um, but as far as like a gameplay mechanic, it was really good. So, yeah, I don't know how I would convert that to Bioshock 1 and 2. It would have to be some sort of stealthy fish man stuff. That right, cool, Bioshock. <clears throat> Bill asks, did you choose to make a legacy card or a pog? So winning hero clicks for Huntington's, all that stuff. The prize you get to choose is making a legacy card or a pog. Uh, personally, I would choose to make a pog. I would make a bystander over a legacy. Uh, sorry, I switched that around. I would make a legacy card over a bystander. Uh, I, you know, if it's the whole I can't choose a specific person, oh, then I'm kind of stuck with wanting to just sort of make a rancher or something, you know, or like a hunter. It would, it would be like one of those. I don't think people would really enjoy that that much. And I would much rather just be like, hey, give Hammer Thor Captain America a legacy card, yeah. make it whatever, see what happens. Like, I would just, it'd be easier from, like, my standpoint, from everything process-wise. And it's ultimately what I would rather have, is one of my favorite figures to be able to play it for, you know, two more years in modern and then always in silver. You know, that's what I would really prefer. Yeah. Um Bystander would be cool because it'd be more unique, but legacy card would be, I, I don't know. I don't, I can't necessarily say that bystander would be more unique because you do get a little bit of, uh, discussion, I guess, on I, like how they change the, um, legacy card. Spirit of the game. Or yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, whatever. So like you do get a little bit of discussion on like what they, you know, like how leech works now because that's the only one we have to go off of. Um, so, yeah, I'd like, bring back Phantom X at 50 points. Uh, increase Eva's stats by plus two to each. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Phantom X gets flurry, but as range. Uh, that's traded. Um, can't be targeted unless he's the last character on the force. Yeah, that's a good 50-point figure. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no one would be mad at me. He's already unique. Mm. So, I mean, you know, cutting 90 points off of his dial, making him a 12 for four that yeah. can shoot twice through Eva. That's a good figure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eva's, yeah, a, Eva's a 19. Um, no one would be flight. mad at all. No. Everybody would be like, this is perfectly balanced. Everyone's like, I'm so glad that Phantom X is back in the game. Yeah. What a great so- figure. Incredibly excited. Oh, also change uh, your outwit so that um, opposing characters can't use safeguard or protected outwit when she uses it. Yeah. For 50 points. Good gracious. I like this. Uh, and then Luke 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 asks, jumping off of Bill's question, if you could destroy a legacy card or a pog. So I'm saying from existence is how I read this, this question. If you destroy right. one legacy card or pog from existence. So besides the legacy card Simeon just mentioned, which I already hate and would like to destroy <laughs> uh, from existence, honestly, you know, I hate to be a negative Nelly. Uh, spirit of the game, I really don't like it. I really mm. don't. The 20 points for a plus one action for any theme team, I really hate. 
I do it's not just because it... I don't have one. Uh, it's definitely not for <laughs> that reason. No, um, I love that the spirit of the game truly captures the actual spirit of this game. I think it not the like man. the flavor text or anything, but uh, the small issue of like you know how many were sent out. Um, the fact that like only a few key players can get them unless you want to pay a lot of money. That's the real spirit of this game. Right. Is it that really does you shell out money, the true spirit you of the don't game. get the thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably the most truly named bystander we've ever had. Right. Uh, I would destroy the legacy Thanos, and not because I really care at all no, about. Him I thought you know you were talking earlier on the show. You're like, man, legacy Thanos. All these chumps be complaining. They need to get good scrub. Yeah. All this and talk I, I stand before by the that. show. I and now he's that. just like, but I would still get rid of it though. No, it's. The only reason I would get rid of the Legacy Thanos card is for the simple fact that there are two Legacy Thanoses that share that dial, and we don't have the one from Universe. The one from Universe needs to be errated to be the same collection number and set as the one from Infinity Challenge. I don't care at all about his dial or power set or, like, if he's hard to beat or... Like, who cares? Why is there the love. exact same figure from a different set, exact same point cost, exact same dial, exact same sculpt, no legacy card? How hard would it have been I, no, to put L141 slash 117 to include the two versions? Come on. It would have literally cost them zero money, and it would have been like that much better for the community. It was an oversight, and if it happens again, uh, I will be issuing yet another uh, class action lawsuit. Of course, of course. I'm sitting on a pile um, of 30 universe Thanoses because <laughs> somebody told me that was the one to collect. <laughs> Man. Oh. Oh. oh, when I first guessed, it's funny. This is actually way funnier, and I love it. Um, Those are all the questions. Guys... I thank you so much for listening to the show. Like we said, if you want to ask questions, you can do so in our Discord. But also, if you want to ask questions like Malcolm, you can send us a message on Facebook, facebook.com slash dial H for Heroclix. On Twitter, dial H4. It's the number four, Heroclix. Um, and we will try to answer all those questions on our social medias, as well as you can email us, dial H4 Heroclix at gmail.com, all spelt out. So, yeah. That's uh, thinking of us. That's you can ask, answer, or not answer, but ask us questions. Like we said, we mentioned we play uh, Bad Samaritan. You got a sneak peek, not a sneak peek, but you got to see how Bad Samaritan was played last week. We can play it. We play that almost weekly uh, in our Discord. And then if you have the highest score of Bad Sam points for the month, you get 10 extra uh, giveaway entries. So even if you're at that $1 rank, you can be basically getting $11 worth of giveaways just by being good at a fun little Hero Clicks guessing game we like to call bad samaritan uh also giveaways this month i'm giving away quite a bit of stuff it's a lot of modern slash some golden uh ellie's super rares uh amount of figures i'll also be giving away um some disney plus funko pops i'm giving away the like 30 inch uh zombie captain america funko pop i'm giving away the um amazon exclusive marvel collector core funko pop boxes so the scarlet witch that was in that one um, and probably like the t-shirt and the pin and all that stuff that was in that box. Um, of course, keeping the dancing Baron Zemo because it's dancing Baron Zemo and I want to have my Falcon or soldier, uh, pop collection complete. Uh, we're giving away all sorts of stuff. We cannot give away any Disney plus stuff yet because it's not officially out, but even though Simi and I will be playing, selling it. some people do be selling it. Though. Very curious. Uh, but Simi and I will be playing in pre-release of Disney Plus this Friday. Oh, yeah. um, so expect some gameplay videos from that. Or if you already want to see some sealed gameplay for Disney Plus for your upcoming pre-release to see how sealed gameplay is played, check out our YouTube channel. We have so far three sealed gameplay videos up there. They're all pretty awesome. They're all played out of the same brick. It's pretty freaking cool. Uh, and definitely check out our sealed team building video we did. Now, this team building was purely based on the boosters we picked, um, but we will still be doing a full set review uh, here in the next week or so. Will be the next podcast. Will be our Disney Plus set review. We'll have some sealed rankings there as well for Disney Plus sealed. Spoiler alert: It's a freaking awesome set to play in sealed, and we can't oh, wait yeah. to play it later this week. No, uh, it is. Yeah. 
absolutely ton of fun. Um, you know what isn't a ton of fun when it comes to hero clicks though, Calder? What's that? It's when when you buy like a bunch of cases, and then you've got to sort all these cards, and it's really hard. Uh, you know what makes sorting cards easier? One, a video that I have yet to release but have filmed. Uh, but two, the nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents deluxe Cool Stuff Inc. sorting tray. So oh. this is actually it's like a Magic the Gathering product because like that's an actual deck game. Um, but it is crazy because it's it's actually a full sized. I might actually pick one up just to test it out. It's a full sized like twenty five full sized like hero clicks cards imagine um and alternating rows and columns and stuff so that they don't like fall over on each other but you can lay your cards down like quickly like sort them so that's a way that i sort is with splitting my rarities but this would be easier because you could do like if i buy a case i'm gonna have uh, you know five zero zero one wolverines uh six zero zero two colossuses so i can like just put the cards in order obviously i would have to be going through a lot maybe i own a a shop of some sort to be requiring this device um but yeah i just i needed a segue and so speaking of cool stuff inc products they've got a bunch of sales going on uh disney plus is about to be released like calder said we've got a pre-release this friday which means the actual release should be uh, in June. So, yeah, make sure you get your pre orders in. Check out all the Hero Clicks figures, new and old, that they've got. And, uh, yeah, check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So, if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people work? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. 